and welcome to Caravani Max and thanks very much indeed for joining us. You join us today for the second video in our two-part series on Caravan Essentials, a two-part vlog. If you haven't yet watched part one, I certainly would recommend that to you because these have been planned together to give, try and give you a very clear uh, set of information on the essential equipment that you'll need for safe, secure and enjoyable caravanning. So now in part two we'd like to complete that information and that, so in that way together with part one you will hopefully be clear about the equipment that you need, the basic essentials, the things that you really shouldn't leave home without. So let's move on into the rest of that now. Let's imagine that you've towed your caravan to the site, you've selected your pitch, you've got onto the pitch, the van's level and you've got your corner steadies down. The next thing to do is plug in to mains power because you really do need to get your fridge plugged in, protect the food that you've got stored there and also make it available, make the electrical power available so that you've got that cup of tea or, or coffee that you so deserve after getting the caravan totally set up. So to do that you're going to need one of these. It's a mains electrical feed cable. One end goes into the caravan one end goes into the electrical bollard that will be close by your pitch. It's very important uh, with this one, it, uh, it's, it's important to get a really good quality cable because it has to safely carry the power to your caravan and it's going to spend a lot of time outdoors in all weathers so it's really important to get a good quality one. There's lots of them out there um, in my view, the one or two of them that are a bit thin for my liking, uh, and I certainly would advise looking for something that's 2.5 millimeter squared in section, that kind of quality cable. In that way, you'll avoid any voltage drop over the cable, and you should also look out for it complying with the the safety standards that, that, that come into play here. That's BS761 and BSEN603092. Those are the safety standards you, you should be looking looking out for in connection with buying a mains cable. So get a good quality one that's going to withstand all the, all the work it's going to have to do in all weathers. When you get it out, unwind it fully. We see lots of people who leave it on a, on a reel and plug in a little bit to the caravan and a, li a little bit to the bollard and leave the rest of it all, all on, all, on a, a, a wheel. The difficulty there is, as it carries power, if it's not unwound, it can tend to overheat and there have been instances of, of that leading to some danger. So when you take out your, your mains lead, unwind it fully, plug it in safely and anything that's spare, store it under the, under the caravan out of the weather. Now in terms of plugging in, the first thing to say is really, really important. When you start out, always plug in the caravan plug first. Plug that in first and only then plug into the electrical bollard. In that way, you're not going to be walking around with a live lead. Don't, don't ever plug in the bollard first and carry a live lead. Plug into the caravan first and then plug into the bollard and that way you'll be safe. Similarly, when you're taking the lead out, unplug the bollard first and then unplug the caravan lead so again you're not carrying around a live lead. Very important for safety. These come in a variety of thicknesses but they also come in a variety of lengths and we would certainly recommend the 25 meter length because that's the one that's likely to be used most often uh, it, it would probably reach to every single bollard that you could you could find on it uh, uh, anytime you're pitching up so it will do for your purposes almost all of the time we've got a 10 meter shorter one for the odd occasions when the bollard is very close but we don't often use that I would recommend the 25 meter one as the one to go for good quality cable if you're buying a new caravan, you should get one of these as part of your basic equipment with the caravan. As always, if, if that's not the case, uh, shop around, check the prices and do check the quality. It's an important piece of safety equipment. Do please get a good one. Still on the subject of electrical power, the other essential you will need is a leisure battery. This will power your 12 volt system when you're not connected to mains power, but it won't run things indefinitely so keep an eye on how you use the 12 volt items in your van. The leisure battery is essential for a number of other reasons. For example, it will maintain the fridge at around the same temperature it started with when you've got the caravan on tow, protecting your food as you travel. However, it won't cool it down any further, so it's best to get on mains hookup as soon as you can when you get on site. The leisure battery is also essential if you plan to fit a caravan mover. So as regards size, or more accurately, capacity, 
we would recommend getting a good 110 amp hour dedicated leisure battery if you think you might have a caravan mover at some point. Be sure to get a dedicated leisure battery. Without getting technical, it does a different job from a car battery so the two are not the same. Be sure to get the right thing. Also, check the height of your battery storage box in the caravan you're buying before you get a battery. The height of a battery box can vary from caravan to caravan, particularly in some Bailey caravans, so you might need a lower profile battery to fit the box. Again, with the leisure battery, do shop around. Prices can vary quite a bit, so it's important to shop around to get the right thing at the right price. Your caravan, as part of its basic equipment, comes with a battery charger as part of its electrical system. And it's important that when your caravan's not in use, when you're not away uh, uh, on site with it, uh, it, and when it's in storage or at home, that you check the battery regularly to see what state of charge it's in. Um, it's important that, that you set up the van so that you can put it on mains if possible to keep the battery charged up, or if you need to, to remove the battery and charge it using an appropriate charger. But do keep an eye on, on the caravan leisure battery when it's not being used, just to make sure that the battery has got some de re decent charge in it, uh, so that it's, it's there for you to use when you need to use it. The other thing to do is uh, to check the battery terminals from time to time, because you'd be surprised how many things can work the way loose as a caravan moves under tow. So check your battery terminals that are secure from time to time. Folks sometimes uh, report problems with their 12 volt system or the caravan mover uh, and they're a bit mystified by it but then they find it's simply due to a loose battery terminal so it's a simple thing and easy to check so check your battery terminals from time to time just to make sure they're secure so that when you want to use your caravan or your caravan mover everything is going to be there available for you to use so that's it about the leisure battery and the electrical system in general if you do have any questions or any comments do please come back to us and let us know so let's now move on to another essential service, another essential for your caravanning, and that's fresh water. And we want to look at how you get and store your supply of fresh water, how you then get it into your caravan, and it's there so that you can use it for all the purposes that you need. Now some caravans have onboard water tanks inside them, and I'm not going to be talking about those today. Also, some sites that people might use have what are called service pitches or super pitches and they have a different way of getting the water supply to the caravan. I'm not going to be talking about those today, but I might cover those in a future vlog. Today I want to just deal with a typical caravan like most, such as most of us have on a standard pitch such as many people use, keeping it simple. So getting the simple water supply and how you get it into your caravan. Let me show you a little bit more on that. Here we are talking about how to get a supply of fresh water to your caravan on a standard pitch and how to feed it into your water system. Many caravanners use a container like this. This one's called an aqua roll. There are others. These are strong, lightweight, barrel shaped containers that can be filled and rolled back to your caravan from the site's water point using the handle attached. Then the water is fed in using a submersible pump which we'll talk a bit more about in just a moment or two. So, at the fresh water point on site where you're going to go to fill your aquarel, you'll find it's a great place to meet other caravanners and have a bit of a chat. Sometimes it takes me ages to get back with the water and I get, to, I get my ear bent as a result of it, but it's a great place to meet other people. And while you're there filling your aquarel, you're going to need something like this. Some kind of filler hose that will Fasten on to the uh, freshwater tap and feed into your aqua roll. There's lots of these different things, different things like these around. There are some very nice collapsible ones that people buy, uh, but this will do the job perfectly well. So you'll need one of these to get the water from the tap into your aqua roll so that there's little mess and you don't get too wet. So once you've got your aqua roll filled and you trundle it back to the caravan, what you're going to do then to get the water into your caravan water system is to use one of these. This is the submersible pump that we talked about. One end plugs into a socket in the external wall of the caravan and the other end goes down the aperture in the top of your aqua roll, down close to the bottom of the water. Try not to let it lie flat. And then this cover will come down, cover the aperture 
and that keeps out any bugs or dust from your fresh water supply. So once you've got that all set up, it's simply a matter of going into the caravan, you'll find the water pump switches on your control panel, switch on the water pump, you'll hear the pump whirring, uh, the hot water tank will fill first, and then as the system gets fully charged, you try out the taps, and you might get a bit of spluttering and spitting from the taps uh, as the air gets uh, expelled from the system but quite quickly you'll get a good water flow and that's your water system all primed up and running. If you're getting a new caravan uh, you should get one of these as your basic equipment so the new caravan you would be supplied with one of these uh, so that's that's part of the setup otherwise you're going to have to get something for yourself again shop around there's, there's two or three diff different makes of these uh, so you shop around and make sure you get a competitive price if you have to buy that for yourself. So that's the submersible water pump and the water system for getting clean water into your caravan. Now in much the same way as what goes up must come down, with regard to water in a caravan, a lot of what goes in must come out. So what happens to wastewater from the sinks and shower? Well, that runs to two waste or grey water outlets on your caravan, usually low down on the rear offside, and from there it can be fed using some push fit pipes into a waste container, very often a waste master. Others are available. Now, as far as getting rid of the wastewater is concerned, getting it into your waste master, sometimes when you buy a caravan, you get with it some of these pipes, these corrugated pipes that are supposed to be for feeding the, the uh, wastewater from the outlets into the wastemaster. They really are not very nice, they're not very flexible, they tend not to fit very well and quite often I, fit, I found them falling out of the outlets, falling out of the aquarel and you end up with a really nasty mess all around. So to avoid that messy puddle I wouldn't recommend those at all. I would certainly recommend uh, getting something like this this is a wastewater outlet pipe kit. Uh, you can buy those from various sources. Amazon's a good source, but other retailers have them as well. Uh, very easy to make up. Uh, there's other sorts from other companies. They're all a push fit, a little bit of cutting, but otherwise it's a push fit, and they fit much better than those corrugated ones and do the job much more tidily. So one of these pipe kits I would certainly recommend not expensive, this one's a little bit more expensive, this one was seven or eight pounds from Amazon so really not very much at all and I would certainly recommend uh, a YouTube video made by Mr Dan Trudgeon, the Trudgeon's uh, caravanning channel, YouTube channel uh, in which he will show you how to make this and put it together not a difficult job at all, if I can do it anybody can do it but I would certainly recommend one of these kinds of things not expensive to buy, very easy to use, all a push fit much much better than these things that simply fall out and create a, a mess and nobody wants that. The other thing to say about your waste master is check it daily, just check that it's not getting too full because the fuller it is the, the there's a greater danger of overflowing and the fuller it is the heavier it is to take away and empty it. So empty it before it's absolutely full, take it to the grey wastewater disposal point, empty it and rinse it and at the same time take your outlet pipes as well, give them a rinse and it keeps everything in good condition and with no nasty smells. Um, so that's the Waste Master, there's lots of those around, it's an essential piece of kit, plenty to choose from so do shop around, it's an important item for, you, for your wastewater, uh, do check around and, and get the right thing at the right price uh, but it's one of those pieces of essential equipment that you simply can't do without. So, as far as essential services are concerned, I suppose that brings us to the toilet. Now, I'm not going to talk about making use of the toilet or its controls or anything to do with the toilet cassette. If you're buying from a dealer, that all should be covered at handover and we might be including some information on that in future vlogs. What I will mention in a minute or two is chemicals that are often recommended for use in connection with the cassette toilet. Now there's a lot of discussion about chemicals. There's a lot of people in favour of using chemicals, some against using chemicals, some people in favour of using particular chemicals. A lot of discussion. I'm going to take a risk and say that we feel that the use of appropriate chemicals in our cassette toilet is the way that we want to go and I'm going to talk about what's essential in that regard if you decide to go ahead to use chemicals. First of all, when setting up 
the toilet cassette we will use a blue fluid. Now this is just one make, um, there's lots and lots of choices, lots and lots of prices so make your own decisions on that but we use the blue fluid either in a fluid form or in a sachet form that goes into the toilet cassette and it helps to break down the waste in the toilet cassette and it leaves just a dark coloured liquid in the cassette that has no particularly unpleasant smell and just makes emptying the cassette a little bit less nasty than it otherwise would be so we, we use the blue fluid um, this is one make as I say there are lots and lots of others uh, it's down to personal preference as to which one you choose if you decide to, to go that route now we often, most often use the blue but some sites specify a more envir environmental fluid, a green fluid um, so there's another version of that, we, use the, we take, have the green fluid as well to take with us and use on those sites that specify that it does the same job and is used in exactly the same way but it's just to, to meet with the requirements of those sites that, that, that want to use a more environmental ver version of the chemical so that's the two fluids that we'll use in our cassette toilet in order to make it a little bit more pleasant to use and to empty and finally one other thing in connection with the toilet on the outside of many caravans above the toilet cassette locker you will see a small hatch this hatch is used to fill the toilet header flush tank this tank stores the water used for flushing the toilet filling this tank can be a little awkward and you'll need a funnel or some other kind of, of container to use when filling this tank inside the toilet cassette locker there should also be a small pipe or hose which can be used to empty the header tank before you tow the caravan Now moving on from, from those essentials to something that uh, some things that aren't absolutely essential but we would strongly advise and the things that we just simply never leave home without. So let's look at a, a short list of those and they're common sense really but we'll go, we'll go through them anyhow just as a bit of a reminder. First thing, a first aid kit, a simple first aid kit. You'll be surprised how often you can get grazed knuckles or a cut when opening a can or something of that sort. Very simple. Have a first aid kit with you. You can deal with a, a small emergency. That Tuck that away somewhere, easily reached. Take yourself a first aid kit. The other thing to say that we always have with us is some tools, the kind of things that you might have in the house for, for small jobs. So some screwdrivers of various sizes, some spanners of various sizes, a hammer, some gaffer tape. Things that you could deal with a small problem enough to get you home when you might affect a more permanent repair or get something repaired if the caravan's under warranty. Along with those, a couple of torches. Uh, not everywhere in a caravan has got lots of daylight so if you try to find something or, or repair something or, or fix something in, a, in a, a, a darkened corner of a cupboard a torch would be certainly would be certainly very handy so take a couple of torches with you of course torches on site at night on the on, on the site are really useful if you have to change a gas bottle or go off to the washroom whatever it is you have to do take a torch with you uh, it, it would certainly be helpful on site in the darkness the other thing we would advise is something with which to light the cooker. Cookers often have electronic ignition, but if that fails or it doesn't work for some reason, uh, you'll, you'll be sorry that you've not got something to light the cooker. So take a box of matches or something to light the cooker with just in case the worst happens. So you can see this is a, a common sense list. It's not exhaustive, uh, but these are things that we don't leave with home without. There'll be other things that you could perhaps think for you, uh, about for yourself. So we would say that they're essential and, and strongly advised and they're common sense things make sure you've got those things to deal with those little emergencies those little eventualities that sometimes crop up and as mentioned in connection with some of the equipment both in the part one video and this part two video of the caravan essentials vlog a check on the essential equipment you should get if buying a new caravan you should get a mains electrical lead a corner steadies handle, a step and the submersible water pump for your aqua roll or water barrel. If you are buying a used caravan some of these might be included but you will need to check with the seller to see if they are. So as you can see when you go caravanning there's a number of things to remember. A number of things that are absolutely essential so we've tried to help you 
by showing you the things that are absolute basic essentials that you shouldn't leave home without, uh, things that you should avoid forgetting that might spoil the enjoyment of your caravan trip. You might find that in thinking about these things it might be useful to make yourself some kind of checklist. Uh, we certainly find, I have one of those, we certainly find it really useful. Uh, a checklist will be a way of ticking off things, making sure that you don't leave one without them. And if you think it would be helpful to you, uh, you, you might want to take a look at a previous video that we made uh, on how we set about making our checklist. Uh, it's been valuable to us and we're more than happy to share that with you. The details of that video are on the screen now and also in the description to the video. So we've been trying to list and advise on all the essential items that you'll need for every caravan trip that you, that you make, the things you can't leave home without. And there's maybe more than you realised and maybe more than you were told by your dealer. Now, inevitably, all of this costs money, so it's really important to shop around. Have yourself a list of the things that you're going to need, whether you're going to have a new caravan and the equipment that comes with it, or whether you're getting a used caravan and the additional things you're going to have to buy. Either way, have a list. Do your research. Um, negotiate, especially if you're buying at your dealer's accessory shop. Negotiate. Try and get a discount, especially if you're buying a caravan there. Ask if there's such a thing as a starter pack. There used to be that sort of thing. Ask if they do a starter pack. Ask if they do a loyalty card or a discount scheme, not only for the things that you're buying now, but the things that you might buy uh, for your caravan in the future. If you don't ask, you simply won't get. So do ask, do negotiate, do haggle and enjoy the process. In fact, enjoy the whole process. It's not every day you can have the excitement of buying a caravan and kitting it out. So enjoy the whole process. Enjoy the excitement. So welcome to caravanning. Have fun and all our best wishes for lots of great trips in your caravan. And we hope that this list of essentials will have been a useful way to start out so that you leave home with everything that you need. So thanks for watching part two of our Caravanning Essentials two-part vlog series. If you haven't already watched part one, please do take a look at that. I think they do go together quite well and give you a complete picture of the basic essentials that you're going to need to go caravanning. We hope it's been of interest to you. We hope it's been helpful. And if so, please do consider giving us a thumbs up and a, and a, and a like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do consider doing that. It's free to do and it certainly encourages us and helps us along and we'd be very grateful for your support. Um, if you are already subscribed and you want to know when the next video is coming out, just ding on that notifications bell icon and YouTube should let you know about that. If you have any questions or comments about anything you've seen in either part one or part two of this vlog series, then do get in touch either through YouTube in the usual way in the comments section or using our email and Twitter pages. Details of those are at the end of the vlog and we will promise to get back to everybody who contacts us. Remember to take a look at our making a checklist video. Details of that uh, are in the description. Uh, that may be helpful to you in making a checklist to make sure that you don't leave home without something really vital. And so till next time, we thank you again for joining us. You hope, we hope you'll join us for the next one. And until then, all we can say is what we usually do is stay healthy. If you're traveling, do travel safely. And above all, keep calm and caravan on. It's Cheerio from the Max. Bye.